go ahead and just give us the elevator pitch real quick of who you guys are and kind of why you wanted to talk to the War Cry today. Okay, we are the Pena Vegas and uh, Carlos and Alexa Pena Vega. We, we do a lot of stuff. We are actors, um, we are vloggers, I guess we're people on social media, um, and, but most most importantly, Singers. we're singing. Yeah, oh, sorry, forgot. You're a singer. You're in a boy band. It's okay. <laughs> it's no pitch. big deal. This elevator pitch is going terribly. Yeah, <laughs> terribly awry. Anyway, uh, but most importantly, uh, we are a family deeply rooted in our faith, and we just want to show um, people what it looks like to be a Christian family here in today's world. So how has life been since 2020? Oh, gosh. Should I go ahead? No, no, you no, go. No, you go, go, you, you go, you go come on, go, go ahead. Go. No, no, no. You, you, no, I'm talking, talking. Uh, front row seat. Here. Front row seat. Okay, listen. I think for a lot of people, like, look, it was really weird and hard. And, like, we were, I think, all I kind of going face. stir crazy. No, Hi, baby. I love you. I, no, I know, but Mommy and Daddy are, are, are just working for a little bit, okay? But what are you guys doing? Just come here real fast. Real fast. Fast, 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 fast. Thank you. He made me prizes. Thank you so much. See, this is... Alexa can't say no. Because he Amazing. made me prizes. Oh, I know, but then every time it's you want... It's artwork. Every time. It's artwork. Thank you, Ocean. Okay. Um, I think everybody was kind of going stir crazy, but uh, the pandemic gave us all a lot of great perspective switches. So I think for us, we were able to kind of focus in on what was the most important thing and really dive into our family life and getting things ready and like prepped here at home exactly how we wanted it. And the busyness of life wasn't getting in the way of us just really creating the roots that we wanted in our home. Yeah, I like that. And I mean, you guys were quarantining in Hawaii. Can't really complain not there. Bad. Listen, we were beyond <laughs> blessed. It's not a bad place to quarantine. <laughs> and were any projects put on hold because of the pandemic? And has any projects picked up since then? I feel like uh, a tour, I mean, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yes and no. I mean, you know, we we the, the 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 whole tour with Big Time Rush. You know, we had wanted to go earlier, but obviously, you know, with with um, you know everybody being forced to stay home, uh, we were not not capable of doing that. So we, um, you know, we we planned it. Thankfully, you know, we uh, we made the right guess of when this thing would be pretty much over. And we're going out this summer. So I think, I think all in all, it was a blessing because it allowed us to really work on our music and, and, uh, you know, figure out exactly who, who we want to, you know, be as a band in this new era of Big Time Rush. Um, as far as like home projects, no, like every, we tried to tackle every home project possible. Uh, and it, it overwhelmed us and stressed us out. And we probably should have, you know, uh, done a, a little bit less and not bitten off more than we could chew, but we had a really great time, you know. Hey, we did the projects before the spike of wood price. We like did. The wood we did do all the, yes, yes. So we, we bought all of our wood yeah. before the wood, 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 <laughs> high, smart, wood smart. price hike. Uh, but no, I mean, you know, it was fun. It was fun. And um, I think I think now everybody's ready to get out and do more stuff. And uh, nobody wants to be locked down. Like, I think it was fun for like two weeks. <laughs> when everyone was tie dyeing stuff and making whipped yeah, coffee, I think, yeah. I, I think two weeks was great. Two years, it's like, are you kidding me? Like, the, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I totally get that. And I mean, we brought up the tour, so give us all, all the details. How did it come about? Uh, when does it start? It's just everything that the people need to know. Yeah. Um, well, we we started talking about bringing back Big Time Rush like two or three years ago. Um, and we always knew that we wanted to tour. We just didn't know like what that would look like. So we did a short little run in December where we, um, we did just like two or three shows, sorry, two, two shows of ours. And then we did two jingle balls and, um, just to, to, you know, just to kind of get our feet wet and see if people would, would, would come. And the reception was insane. And we decided to put a full blown tour on sale, uh, about two, two weeks ago. So, well, when this is airing is probably like three months ago. Uh, but, but, but we, we kind of just went out on a limb and said, Hey, let's just go for it. And we are playing some pretty insane venues like Madison square garden. And, you know, like a couple, a couple huge amphitheaters. And 
surprisingly, people are coming. I'm really excited. The tour is going to be so much fun. We we are going to be hitting 41 dates in the U.S. and then three in Mexico as of now. Uh, things are things are literally like selling out like crazy. So we're we're pumped, and you know we feel so blessed that we get to do this again. And if you guys want to come, obviously we'll hook it up. Oh, I think you would just make 14 year old Michelle and Elizabeth's dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> Done. So. With this, so there's been a lot of revivals, reboots. iCarly is on Paramount Plus. Have you guys talked about bringing Big Time Rush back to television? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we want to do something. I I don't think that we'd ever do like another Big Time Rush and how zany and and like crazy that was because we're all a little bit older and I feel like we might um, really just not like it after a while you, <laughs> you know, want it the, like playing high schoolers yeah you know it's the so show relatable. was fun I, you know I think I think that it would be interesting to have a you know a hybrid show of you know like our characters back in the day but also where they are now in their lives like whether you know because Alexa was in the last episode of Big Time Rush so so whether you know we got married and had kids it's like well, we, you know, we kind of could have done that in the show. So I don't know. There, uh, we've been talking about it. I think I think that we know that we need to do something because it's because music is just so cutthroat right now, and and to gain like a new audience through music, bless you, it's really hard. And I think most of the people coming to see us now are fans from the past, and it's more of like a nostalgia thing. But we're really interested in, in you know being here for the long run. So we got to figure out a way to bring new fans in and. I, I think I think a TV show would be a great way to do that. Yeah, I mean, I know I would watch. I would like <laughs> sit there and just be like, "This is so cool! Like, I know them." <laughs> so, how you guys did a mini tour, but now you guys are going on a big tour. How was life while you were on your mini tour? You know, did that test your marriage for a while? Were you guys separated? Did you bring the family? Yeah, you know that that was only like a. It, it was only about a like a like a ten day trip, all in all. Um, and you know, I mean, I mean, we're, I think for anything, it probably tested Alexa's parenting. Cause you know, she had three kids for 10 days. Um, as far as our marriage goes, I mean, we, we kind of have like a two week rule. So we kind of try not to, you know, go past that. And, you know, for a small tour, as much as she wanted to be there, can you help me out with that? Sorry. As much as we, um, wanted to be there or wanted everyone to be there, it, 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 it just didn't make any sense. Uh, but on our big tour, we're going to have our own bus. The whole family's coming and, uh, hopefully we survive. <laughs> this one's already being a rascal right now. <laughs> and, uh, Alexa, I asked Carlos this about like bringing big time rush back to TV, but how would you feel if everything being redone and rebooted these days, if there was a new spy kids? Well, I'm. I actually know that they're making another Spy Kids, but I don't know if it has anything to do with the original Spy Kids. So, uh, so there is a reboot, and I'm all for it. I feel like Spy Kids was definitely it. It did well, but it was also ahead of its time because they weren't really doing those kinds of movies back then. You so had us I'm, thinking we could put a box or like a bag in a microwave, and then boom, we get a Happy Meal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> why are we that not doing exist. that? How is that not a thing yet? Um, you know, I just wonder. I wonder what it will look like in today's world. I mean, because so much has changed. I think that they would have to do it in a very clever way that could also still have like. I don't know, to keep its special, special quality to it. I, I don't know. Spy Kids was so special because there was nothing like it back in the day. So I'm curious to see what they come up with this time around. So, you know, we're talking about the kids. How how are the kids? How old is everyone? Uh, are they starting to have their own personalities, hobbies, interests? Are they singing or do they want to act? Okay, so uh, Ocean is five. Kingston is about to be three. His third birthday is actually the night that we're playing Madison Square Garden. So I'm really, I'm really hoping that he'll, he'll, be okay to come out and it'd be cool to have everybody sing happy birthday to him. But I think he might be a little shy. Um, and then Rio is about 10 months. She'll be a year in May, May 7th. So we have our, we, we, we have our hands full. Everyone's got their own thing. Like ocean is, he's into exploring and just adventuring. Kingston is my emotional, like, like if he became a singer, he'd be like, um, He'd be like, uh, who's, who, who always like, is it like 
Alanis Morissette is, is it, like oh she's like, been, like like the super sad song super sad like song. emotional song. yeah oh yeah <laughs> that that would be Kingston uh, and then Rio she's great she's she's this last week she's been really tough but um but yeah so overall it's been great. Yeah. And then, I mean, I'd love to hear Lex's point of view too when she comes back. So I might ask this twice, but how was living on a boat with three kids? Yeah. You know, so, so, so the whole boat thing, uh, the whole boat thing came about, we, we were in the middle of the pandemic and we had a, um, had an investment property on Maui that we were vacation renting and it was, you know, it was fun for a couple of years, but it was a lot of work and we're, we're very much the people who like to do everything hands-on. So we weren't the ones to just hire a company to do it. So we, we were doing it. We were meeting the guests. We were there if, if there was a problem, like, you know, we were managing bookings and it was really cool. But then during the pandemic, everything kind of stopped um, and there were no more rentals, but, uh, but people were still buying houses because everyone wanted to live on Maui. So we made the decision to sell, to, to, you know, sell the property and we decided to basically transfer all the funds into another adventure and it was uh, a catamaran. So, so we bought a, a she's a 14 year old catamaran um, and uh, she's 61 feet. So she's pretty big. And we decided that we want to spend as much time as we can adventuring with the family uh, here on Maui, but also on the water. We, we, um, we sailed a, a bit as a couple before we had kids. I sailed as, as a kid and um, we just thought that it'd be the perfect, uh, you know, segue into the next adventure. So we've been fixing up this boat over the last six months. Uh, we've been living on it on and off. It definitely is. Uh, it's challenging because you're trying to entertain a bunch of kids while you're sitting at a dock trying to fix up the boat. <laughs> but once we get going and the boat is done, I think it's going to get a lot easier. And the kids just absolutely they, they're they, they thrive over there. I mean, mm-hmm. like. Uh, look, 60, 60 feet. It's, it's a, she's, she's a very spacious boat. So it's not like anybody feels trapped. Uh, but, but the kids are running in and now they're fishing all day long with grandpa. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, if, if the pandemic gave us any eye opening, it was that we don't know what could happen tomorrow. You know, like if we get locked down again, or if, you know, if a war happens or with this or that, like you don't know. So instead of waiting for the right moment, when we think the right moment is going to be to do something, we were like, let's just do it, you know? And, and yeah, so, so we're doing it. How's it been for you with, with kids on the boat? I wasn't like in love with the idea right when we did it. I knew that we wanted to do it at some point in our lives, Um, I really liked the idea of it, but after being on the boat and really growing like such a love for it, I love it now. It's not something that I'm like, Oh yeah, this is just kind of fun. I'm in, I'm a hundred percent invested. And so are the kids. Like they thrive, we thrive and we're just, I don't know. We're not good at being stagnant. We like moving around. We like adventuring. And this just really brought this really cool, dynamic in our family where we are super close and one thing that we experienced when we used to sail way back when was like we would go with our bible study group and just go sailing and you just felt like this really cool closeness to god separated from all of the rest of the world but you're just really focusing in on like your relationship with god your relationship with one another it's just a it's a really cool experience that i hope more people get to have because it's really unique yeah, definitely. And I remember the first time we talked, you kind of told us about how you came up with Ocean's name. Yeah. And weren't you guys sailing? So like, we oh, how was literally yeah. those sailing trips? <laughs> so how was that kind of being back out there and just being like, like, I don't know, like how, what did you reflect on um, while you guys were, I keep liking to say out at sea. <laughs> Sounds cool. Yeah. I mean, um, Ocean was truly made for this. Yeah. I mean, like Ocean, Ocean I thrives out there yeah. and you know, look, I think, I think it's, it's been a, to be honest, we, we, we haven't actually gone out on like a, our big a adventure big yet. yet. We've just been refitting the boat. And like, that's always part of something like we don't ever buy something that's done, which I think Alexa would love, <laughs> but, but I'm cheap. And that's good. That's how we've been able to do what we, yeah, what we do. Yeah. I'm, and, and, and I'm like, I'm like, it's so much so much more fulfilling to accomplish something and build something yourself and then, and then, and then enjoy it versus like, Oh, I bought this and now this is my thing. And I don't know. That, that's just how I was raised, it was, you know, just kind of like, like, like earn it, you know? Uh, so every house that we've ever bought, it's, 
it's always something that we have to put work into. But what you see after, like the transformation is really well, rewarding. Right. And, and the feeling of accomplishment afterwards, like I did this, like you, nothing else can replicate that unless you put in the work. And I feel like we, we live in such a world where people are afraid uh, and just lazy and don't, and don't want to put in the work because it's, it's going to be too hard or it's too hard or I just don't feel like it. And I, my mindset is the complete opposite. I'm like, no, I will put in the work because I know, I know what that feeling is at the end. Yeah, definitely. No, I love that. And uh, something else you guys worked on was this book. So let's yes. dive into this is the meat and the potatoes of the interview. <laughs> so <laughs> how did the book come about? What inspired it? Uh, what's the title of it? Everything. So you want to talk okay. about how it came about? No, 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 because this was years so, ago. So like five years ago, we we wanted to write a book and we made this one page document called What's the Point? And we just like, how, how did it really come about? We though? just started like jotting because we knew we wanted to write a book with, it was in the season of vlogging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The season yeah. of all of that. And you know, people kept saying, why don't you make your wows? Uh, we have these things called wows, into words of wisdom yeah. into a book. So we just kind of started playing around with that idea and, and going like, the biggest question we get is like, what's the point of all of it? Like, what's the point of following Jesus? What's the point of uh, life? You know, just all these big, what's the point questions. So we're like, oh, maybe we write a book called what's the point. So we just kind of started exploring this idea, but never really got anywhere with it and just put that on the back burner. Uh, we never approached anybody about writing a book, nothing. And then um, I just think it's so funny how like God's timing works. Like one person we like talked to just hanging out, like, uh, just kind of someone pouring into us ended up being a big writer and putting us in contact with someone else. And then we just didn't talk about the book again. Like it was just like, Hey, we want to write a book one day. And then we didn't talk about it again for another year. And then someone else came into our lives who happened to know those people. And then they're like, we want to give you guys a book deal. But it was, it's kind of hard to explain because there were just so many, um, what do you call it? Like, it was like a, it kind of, it was we, like a maze we, to get here. We, no, but we never, we, we never, never forced it. it. We yeah. just kind of said, you know what, God, when it's time, like, we'll write a book. We'll just write a book. And that's kind of what happened. Like we, we, we literally one day got an email and somebody was like, Hey, my, 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 my publicist, or sorry, my publisher saw a video that Alexa posted and then wrote this and said that you by any chance don't know them, do you? And he was like, I do. And linked us up. And she was like, have you guys ever thought about writing a book? Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Anyway, so, 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 so then, so then he was like, he was like, um, so he connected us and she wrote us and she said, have you guys ever thought about writing a book? And we were like, well, funny enough, we have this document from five years ago. Let me just send it to you. It's called what's the point. And she came back and was like, I love it. I want to give you guys a book deal. We were like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so yeah, it's just, I don't know. It just really showed us that we just got to let, like let go and let God. And when you try and force things, it doesn't work. I've tried to force so many things and the, and the things that I've gotten to work by forcing them, God then, and, 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 you know, I talk about it in the book. There was this house that, 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 you know, we bought in California when we first got married. And I just loved it because it had this huge outdoor, it was on a cliff, the pool, and I could see my bachelor pad. And it was like, God was like, that's not what you need right now. I'm like, no, this is what I need. He's like, no, this is what you want. This is not what you need. And I was like, well, whatever, God, I want this and I need this. So, so I literally ended up forcing it to happen after he continually was like, no, no, no. I forced it to happen. And it ended up being the biggest nightmare ever. Like, and, and I go into detail in the book because we lost so much money. It was like a five-year lawsuit. It was terrible. And we ended up, it ended up helping me. Like God used it as something to grow me. Like uh, long story, sh story short, the builder who built it just did not do a great job. And rooms were flooding. Things were falling apart. And I'm a guy, like, I love cleanliness. I love organization. I'm a one in the Enneagram. Like, I am like, I am like full on, like, I'm, yes. And 
my house was my sanctuary. And God was like, well, that's like, that's not what, what, that's not why I bless you is so that you can hoard them to yourself. And I was like, well, this is my spot. Nobody else. I want this clean. This is for me. And he's like, well, that's not how this is going to work. So uh, like amidst the whole flooding, all the destruction, the house was a mess. The like during the lawsuit, we weren't allowed to fix anything. So everything was always just ugly and gross. And, and Alexa had been wanting to start a Bible study and I was not about it because I was like people in my house, random people in my house, putting their feet on my carpet and their butts in my couch, like not going to happen. And when the house was just a total disaster, I said, screw it. Who cares? I'll, I'll do a Bible study. But in that, our faith grew so much. And we were literally hosting these Bible studies. I kid you not, we had like 50 people every Monday. And we committed to one year. We said, we'll do one year every Monday. And if we're not in town, somebody's going to be at our house hosting it. And Alexa would cook every Monday. I bought a whole PA system. We had full worship, like full, full blown worship. We had people. I mean, I, w- I wouldn't do this now, but I literally would send out an email and I'm like, hey, invite whoever you want. Bible study Monday. Here's what we're talking about. And we would leave the gate open at the guard gate and random people would just show up. And it, 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 it was, cra- it was nothing that I, I would ever do, but God literally used that situation and that terrible, terrible house lawsuit and everything to break the chains that I had with material items and possessions. And it was just so cool. I don't even know how, Oh yeah. So anyway, so I talk about that in the book and I don't know how we got on this conversation and what question you asked, but <laughs> All of that to say, whatever you, your question, I, I just, I don't even know. I'm sorry. I, I get so passionate because these things happened and I'm like, guys, like don't make the same mistake I did. Yeah. Right. No, it makes sense. And especially too, cause like, so correct me if I'm wrong, but like, wasn't that around the time where like you probably started making like real adult money. So 100%. you were probably like, I want to spend it how I want to spend it. 100%. So like you said, and, God kind of was like, uh-uh, that's not the mindset to have. Yeah. And, and, and you know what I did? I spent all of it on a stupid house that God was like, don't do this. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, cool. Anyways, yeah, yeah. He was like, he was like, don't do this. And I was like, no, I'm going to do it. He's like, don't do this. I'm going to do it. Um, but he still had us in... Yeah. That uh, wrong decision making. Like it was, was it was, it was terrible. You know what? If I learned anything before I make any decision, especially a big one like that, you really got to have peace about it. And Alexa and, 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 and your partner has got to have peace about it or else. Yeah, no, it's, it's so weird. You guys are saying this. Cause like, I'm actually in the process of buying a house. Like the market is horrible right now though, <laughs> but I know what you mean. Like we look at these houses on Zillow where we do a tour and I'm just like, I don't like it. And my friend's like, why? It meets everything you're looking. I'm like, I don't know. It's just it's a gut feeling. It. I just yeah. can't. Yeah, yeah you it's not it. Go with their gut. Go with God. Don't like, if you don't have peace about something, especially a home purchase, like, I mean, look, I gained a lot of out of it, a, a lot out of it. We gained a lot out of it. There's such a great testimony there, but it could have been avoidable. It could have been avoidable. <laughs> and but, you know, had that not happened, would we have moved to Maui, you know, five years in, into that lawsuit and just been like done? I mean, right. I mean, would you have hosted Bible studies if right. you had this perfect, pristine right. house, you, and you the, know, and, and the people that we met, and, I mean, we were, it was at the point we were house broke. We, did, we, we, we literally could, could barely afford furniture in the house and we were living paycheck to paycheck because I literally spent all the money on this house, house that God was like, don't do it. So like, I mean, I feel like I know your answer, but it could be wrong. But what was your favorite and least favorite part um, in, in the book? Like what's your favorite chapter, favorite paragraph? Well, I really like how we, Lex and I go back and forth every chapter. And it's just really nice to see our perspective and tell our story that way, you know, versus like, this is a book and I'm going to write this whole book about me and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But it's like, it's our story told from my my point of view and her point of view. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Hey, you close the door. Sorry, you can hear it so loud. Um, so yeah, so it's it's our story, but told from 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 both of us, which I think is super unique and super cool. 
And is it in a timeline? So it's kind of like it takes you back to like this year, and then you've got Alexa talking, and then Carlos talking. We start. We start from from before we met, from like my childhood, Alexa's childhood, and then we grow up. You know, grow up in the industry. We meet. We go through all that, and then kind of leaves us off where we are today. And it's really cool because I wasn't. I wouldn't say it's like a memoir. I'd say it's. I say it's partially a memoir. It's, you know, it's a, it's a lot about our lives and how we got here today. But there's so many really awesome life lessons that, as we were writing the book, I was kind of reliving, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like we need to share this uh, with the world. And I don't know. What's cool is we talk about how even when we didn't realize God was with us, like now looking back at different points in our lives, we're like, "Man, God had us there too," and we just were so unaware of it. And I think that's kind of like the main theme throughout it. Like even through childhood, us getting through all of our, uh, like going through all of our stuff, like our growing pains and everything. God was just with us through it all. And I think that's kind of like the overall theme. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. And you kind of talk about, cause this, you're like perfectly on schedule because my next question is, were there any fights or disagreements that came up while you were writing the book where like Alexa was like, let's talk about this. And you were like, absolutely not. That's too embarrassing. No, you know, you know, uh, Harper Collins Christian, they're, they're amazing. Yeah. Um, and we have such an, like, again, we've never written a book before. So we have such an awesome team over there. And, um, there, there's this one woman named, uh, Margo, what's your last name? Um, Margo Star. 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 She she was like our our like third partner in crime helping us write write this book. And she really helped guide us. Because look, we all think oh, I can write a book. And then you sit down and you try and like write and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. And then you have like, I mean, I don't know. I thought going into it, I thought it was gonna be like easy peasy. We wrote a book. That's it. But when you get into the nitty gritty, like what, what, what these authors do is so incredible and their yeah. storytelling and the way they outline and structure is so, there's so much that goes into the book before you actually write the book that yeah. we didn't know about. And we had this awesome team and Margot was so incredible at just kind of like funneling all of our ideas and stories and thoughts. She helped us navigate. Like we had all of these thoughts and stories, but you can't just a lot like a bleh onto a piece of paper like it, it needs more structure than that so she really helped us navigate and structure what the book is yeah. today yeah it's really cool okay that's amazing and who would like this book like who is your audience oh my goodness it, you know what's tough I feel like this is a I would say it is a 18 to 80 <laughs> Yeah. Right, a broad range because we talk about so much, but a lot of it is really relatable. I think for so many different people, I, I don't think it's just like, a, oh, this is mainly adults or mainly married people. Um, we do talk a lot about family stuff, but really a lot of it was relational stuff early yeah. on between each other relationships with like how to have like healthy boundaries in your family life. Um, we wanted to make sure that people took away more than just, Oh, now, now, now I know their life and where they came from. I'm like, I, to me, I was never interested in that. I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, we can talk about who we are, but I was like, but, but, but like, I have a passion for educating people. Like, like, let me just like help you. Like I want to help. I want to tell you the things that I've gone through to, so that you can avoid going through them. Uh, and, and every chapter, I think I, I, Again, this team, they were so great at helping us make sure that the end of the chapters, you know, it wasn't just like, you know, fluff. It was like, oh, wow, let me think about what, what, what they just said, you know, because I've, I've read other, you know, books and I'm like, okay, great. That's cool. I like their story. But this one, I feel like people are going to be able to take away a lot and go, hmm, that was really cool. I learned a lot. Yeah. And with that, are there any plans to write another book or maybe like start a Bible study series? You know, we, 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 um, we are, we're in the process of writing a, um, uh, yeah, like, like, like an extra book, uh, kind of like, kind of like a workbook type thing that'll come out next year. 
uh, based on this book. And then our publisher actor just asked us the other day, she's like, so have you guys started thinking about book number two? I was like, I was like, lady, I'm just finishing book number one. But I guess, in, I guess in the book world, that's what you do. You just, move fast. You just like move and move and move. So no, you know, it is. Yeah. My family's always like, um, they were talking about, um, Easter and I was okay. like, Easter's been over for months. What do you mean? And they're like, what do you, it's, it's February. And I'm like, no, like I finished the Easter issue like a month ago. To me, Easter oh is gosh. done. It's it done. is May. <laughs> it's summer. So to me, this, this conversation, it means it's June. We are at the pool. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah so, exactly. The book is done. It's out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically. So that's how that, and when you work in publishing, I totally get that. Cause yeah. you're months ahead. Funny. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. I was done with Christmas by Halloween. So <laughs> you're like, it already happened. Done. Yeah. So I totally get it. Um, so kind of tying back, you guys talked a lot about like in the book that you have a message to share. And that message is, you know, about God is always with you, even when you think he's not. So what advice would you give to anyone who's kind of struggling with learning that message or struggling to put God first in their life? Yeah, go for it. Um, the advice that I would give, um, I think, especially with all like the crazy negativity around like the world right now, I think it's super easy to focus on the negative, but just start like a blessing journal. Um, so anytime you feel blessed, even if it's like the slightest blessing, like, um, you know, somebody giving you a ride to work or, um, what else? Like, you know, how, like sometimes things could just totally go wrong, but then you have like one little thing that goes right, write that one little thing that goes right down. And, and then really kind of recognizing the positives in your life as opposed to the negatives. And then when you start doing that, you're actually going to go, oh my gosh, God has is showing up in my life over and over and over again. I've just missed it because my focus has been magnified on the negative stuff. Um, and then from there, I would just say, just start talking to God. Like, even if you don't feel anything, even if you don't feel like you're hearing from him, but to just say, start that conversation and develop that relationship into, you know, you just have to develop that relationship. I hope that makes sense. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. No, it does. Cause I think most people just don't know where to start most of the time. Yeah. And I think it's weird because you expect this like big hallelujah aha moment of like, okay, God, I'm talking to you. Am I getting something back? Like, how does this work? And I think it's just in the same way that I talk to my husband, in the same way that you talk to your friend. Like, just start that conversation and build that relationship. And as that relationship grows, you're going to find this really cool depth and this holiness that kind of enters into your life that maybe you were not aware of before. No, that makes total sense. And also in the book, Carlos kind of talked about this, that you guys talk a lot about relationships and your marriage. Um, and I'm sure that like, you know, every marriage, every couple has like a rough patch or where they're going through a hard time. So without, I guess, giving away too much of the book though, what like words of encouragement or advice would you give a couple going through that hard time? Does um, that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Really, really. And again, I, everything goes back to God, but like super leaning into God. I mean, uh, we had a time where had we not been married, we would have broken up. And I think that's why we're such advocates for marriage is because it really is this like holy, beautiful oneness that you get to experience with your partner through the thick and through the thin. So when we were experiencing our really kind of rough times, um, I just didn't stop praying. And it was like a year of, of, a rough patch. But throughout that year, I was just praying nonstop over Carlos, over our marriage, um, trying to kind of pull through that. And then that next year was probably one of like the closest years we ever had. And then from then on, we really flourished. Like we continued to just get closer and closer and closer. And I said this the other day, I'm like, man, this is the closest I've ever felt to you. And it's just really cool to because we have, we have, our kids are like <laughs> we're hiding eating us. Our, our kids are killing us. So we're just like, oh, we, we're dying together. Oh. <laughs> no, they're good. They're just, we're working on listening right now. It's not a baby season of that. Uh, but yeah, so, so I would say just like really um, leaning into one another and um, a lot of prayer. My last thing, I'm so sorry. This is for married couples. It, there's this fantastic woman called Francie Winslow. Um, she has a podcast called Heaven in Your Home. And she really talks about the oneness and holiness that God intended for marriage and why a lot of 
marriages really struggle and a lot of it has to do with intimacy and it was very eye-opening and transforming in a beautiful beautiful way like it takes the awkwardness of talking about intimacy from a christian point of view out of the equation like it's no longer awkward it just feels holy and beautiful yeah that's amazing okay so we have a game for you guys Yes. We're so in. I hope you're ready. Okay. So basically I'm going to re- read a line either that Carmen says in Spy Kids or a line that Carlo says in Big Time Rush. And you guys have easy. to tell us who said what. Easy. And some of these are really, some of these are really easy. <laughs> okay. I just try to find funny ones. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going I'm to laugh so much. I can't. <laughs> okay. Never sent an adult to do a kid's job. Go ahead. You, I said that. I know. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Right. <laughs> Well, you see, I know, I know. <laughs> and I actually, feel like we should have done points. Okay, Alexa gets one point. <laughs> I, thought, I actually thought Daryl said that, to be honest with you. Well, but I knew it was no, a spy it's, kid. It's, it's either spy kid or big time rush. Yeah, it's either spy kids or big time rush. <laughs> it's either you or Carlos, yeah. <laughs> okay, if you drink milk on a hot day, you will die. It has to be Carlos. I never <laughs> said, that. Yeah. said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. wish, like, I, I literally I'm just sure Googled... <laughs> Yeah, I literally just Googled Big Time Rush quotes or like Spy Kids quotes, and they don't have episodes, though. <laughs> I wish they did. I mean, it probably wasn't me. It was, it was probably one of the boys. No, it says Carlos. Really? Yeah. That's totally something you would have said. Let's see. Okay. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Pull up, booger breath. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. When we're in the airplane. Yeah. Yes. I actually just watched that yesterday with Kingston. Because that literal scene, I was like, see, Kingston, mommy had to wear diapers in this movie because he calls me diaper lady. Uh, because yep. when he takes a nap, he still kind of tingles a little bit. So I'm like putting diapers on him and he didn't want to. And I'm like, I'll show you this scene. And it was literally <laughs> that scene. So Spike it. Yep. Um, oh, this one's, this one's an obvious one. Machete, uh, machete electroshock gumballs. It says long lasting, but I don't trust rappers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spy Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another very obvious one, but still cute. But this is just like hockey, only instead of crashing the boards and rushing the net, you're singing and dancing. Yeah, Kendall said that. Big time rush. Big time rush. Carlo, no, you say all of these. Really? Yeah, it's either Carlos or Alexa. Or Carlos Dude, or Carmen. <laughs> I know because the hockey, I don't remember saying that at all. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I had way more lines though. I did like 75 episodes. Actually, no, I barely spoke. So you're probably, probably saying my lines is you. I will say, because I was on Wikipedia looking for Carlos quotes. And wow. it was slim pickings. Like oh, just ones that like were I funny. Or... Five different episodes. So... But most of your stuff was, <gasps> yeah, 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 Yes. Yeah. Or it was like you and Kendall at the same time just yell yeah. James names. And it's like, okay, that's not like a line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, we like hot dogs too. Carlos. That was definitely yeah. a yeah, big time rush. I love, I love corn dogs in the show. Not <laughs> okay, and my favorite one, because all of us kids got away with saying this to our parents, all oh, shiitake shit, mushrooms. Yes. <laughs> hey! that's just, that was basically Carlos's pickup line. Yeah. When we met. What was a pickup line? I, I, I just said I liked that part of the movie. He's like, hey, I like oh, shiitake mushrooms. I'm like, all right, dude. Well, it wasn't, fun fact, that line wasn't in the movie. I said it on set one day because I like learned it from somebody else. So uh, the director was showing me something and I was like, oh, shiitake mushrooms. That's cool. And he's like, what did you just say? And I'm like, don't tell my mom. <laughs> and then we put it in the movie. I so love cool. it. That's even better. <laughs> Carlos, is there any like of your famous lines that I couldn't find on Wikipedia? <laughs> I don't think I had any famous lines. I mean, I was the, I was the physical comedy guy. So I was the one who would... You know, it was always like fall off the roof into the pool and explosion, eat a corn dog. Like that was. I think um, that's why it was. It was kind of hard because it was very yeah. like I saw the lines were very like uh, one liners, and I was like, yeah. "That's not enough for this game." Yeah. <laughs> did you do your? Yeah. Did you do your own? Um, uh, like stunts. Like, did you really ever fall the off? Into the big? They, they don't really let you like unless you're Tom Cruise and you're like, "I'm doing it." They don't, they don't they, like, it's, they let us do our own stuff. Yeah. Well, you're doing a movie that was six months and it was over. They we, like, like we, we did a lot of stuff. So it was like, there was just no time, you know, like I know that, that there was, there was one episode that I did a cannonball from the roof of the palm woods into the pool, but, it, but, but the pool was like indoors. So they like rigged this whole thing up and the guy got to 
jump off. And I was so bummed. I was like, I can do this. And they're like, no, you can't. So he did it. And then it caught, and I got in the water and I came out. I was like, oh, but I was so bummed that they wouldn't let me do it. And I, like, that's so easy. As like a 19, 20 year old, I was like, I don't get it. Like, why can't I do this? So like legal purposes. I'm like, nothing's going to happen to me. Um, is there any other like words of wisdom, any messages you guys want to share? This is kind of the, the end, unfortunately. Um, well, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Well, we're super excited to, I mean, we have so much stuff happening this summer. Uh, our book is coming out on uh, June 28th. I hope that's the date or 26th. It's 28th to 26th. Sure. You should know I think this. It's the 28th because I looked oh, it up today. Boom, yeah. boom. So yeah, <laughs> June 28th. Uh, what if love is the point? Uh, and then, and then the big term rush tour all summer, uh, starting in DC. So hopefully we'll see you there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you know, we're just, we're just excited to be able to get back out there and just be a light for everyone. And, um, like, I don't know, like we, we love meeting people. So if, if you see us all see us on the street, don't be afraid to say hi. And uh, we hope that, um, our message, uh, you know, makes you think and, you know, wants you to challenge the way that you're living. Can I leave a wow? Go for it. Here's my wow. Don't wait to do the things that you want to do. Because if we're, if we could be any example, we had all these dreams that we were like, oh, those will happen later. And then we realized, why are we waiting? I mean, we even did it. Like when we got engaged, we were like, why are we waiting? Let's get married. We already know we want to get married. This is it. So we got married. We decided to move to Hawaii instead of waiting until we were older. We bought a boat so that we could sail. So instead of waiting until we're older, don't wait. If there's something that you want to do and God yeah. is putting it on your heart to do it, go. And make it happen. Like, look, like, like obviously, you know, there are things that can get in the way and, and, and not, not prevent you, but delay you from doing something like we needed to sell that property so that we could buy the boat. So, but our, our idea was we want to get the boat. How do we make this happen? You know, um, if I ever want something like, like a new drone or like a new toy, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not just going to go buy it. I'm like, how, like, how, how, I earn it? how do I earn it? And it's like, okay, cool. Well, I don't need X, X, and X, and X. Let me sell X, 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 and X. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to use the money to buy this. So it's like, they're like, you just, like, I always think of, of like things as a delay, like, okay, cool. I can't get, like, we really want to do a bunch of like blinds and stuff in the house. We don't have any right now because the ones from Target are just, they're too small and we have to get them custom made. And that means that they're expensive and we just can't afford it right now. So I'm like, okay, cool. It doesn't mean that we're never going to have them. It just means that it's just a delay until we can get them. And now we have to figure out how, like, how to, how to get it. Right. You know? So it's like, it, it's, it's like a puzzle. Like, like to me, life is like a puzzle and it's like, you can literally have whatever you want and you can do whatever you want. You just got to figure out how to get all the pieces to finish the puzzle. That's all it is. Most people are like, I'll never, I'll never be able to do this. I'll never get to go on a trip, but I'm going to do this. And it's like, well, well, yeah, you know, with that attitude, it's never going to happen. But I always think of it as the puzzle pieces and we're, you know, we're, we're still finding the puzzle pieces. And once that puzzle is complete, like I did it. I'm married to a crazy person. <laughs> You're not crazy. Come on, I'm giving you the world. <laughs>